So the state of California is now poised to try and pass 40 new gun control laws in reaction to the recent Sacramento incident. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the state of California needs to stop violating our rights to keep and bear arms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of the channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. So like I said in the intro, in this video, we're going to talk about how the state of California will now be moving to pass a large slew of new gun control measures in reaction to the recent incidents in Sacramento. Now, I'm not going to go in depth on the incident itself, mainly because we don't know much about really anything in relation to the real facts of what happened. We do know that early Sunday there was a shooting which resulted in six people being fatally wounded and about 12 other people being wounded. At this point, news is that two brothers have been potentially arrested by the police and that there was a shooting that took place at that same location, but it's unclear right now if those two are actually connected. We also know at the scene based on evidence that 100 spent casings were found and a stolen handgun that was converted to fire automatic. In reaction to this incident, gun control advocates and politicians have now jumped once again on their soapbox and have started calling for more gun control measures. Gavin Newsom released a statement following the incident that amounted to him calling for the end of gun violence, and he also stated that the state of California must do more. President Biden also made statements which included him saying, we must do more than just mourn. We must act. That is why my administration has taken historic executive action to implement my comprehensive gun reduction strategy. From standing up gunning trafficking strike forces to help cities across the country expand community violence interventions and hire more police officers for community policing. We also continue to call Congress to act, ban ghost guns, require background checks for all gun sales, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines, repeal gun manufacturer immunity from liability, pass my budget proposal, which would give cities more of the funding they need to fund the police and fund the crime prevention and intervention strategies that can make our cities safer. These are just a few of the steps Congress urgently needs to take to save lives. In reaction to the incident, there have also been a call by various assemblymen and women in California for more gun control measures. Dozens of new gun control bills will now be introduced, amounting to somewhere around 40 new gun control bills being introduced this year alone in California. Gun control bills already introduced in California, many of which we've discussed already on the channel, will likely also get a heavier push now that California and gun control is back in the spotlight. Now in this video, I wanted to dispel a lot of the false narratives that have been going around in regards to why California needs to introduce more gun laws. First and foremost, like I stated earlier, we don't know all the facts about what actually happened in Sacramento. So for politicians and gun control advocates to call for more gun laws is absolutely moronic. We don't know anything right now at all. Therefore, how can politicians say we must introduce more bills to allegedly stop these types of incidents when we don't even know what actually led to this specific incident? The reality is that gun control advocates don't actually care about the facts. They simply want to use the situation to introduce a slew of bills that have no relation to this incident at all. Also, keep in mind that the state of California already has 107 gun laws on the books, which is the most out of any state in our nation. So why have the 107 gun laws not stopped criminals? Well, that is because, as we all know, criminals don't actually follow these laws. They're criminals for a reason. They're criminals because they break laws. They don't follow laws. These laws only impact law-abiding residents in the state of California. And in all honesty, that's really what these politicians want. They don't really want to stop criminals. If California really wanted to punish criminals and to stop criminal activity, they would make criminal penalties not so lax like they are now, they wouldn't pay criminals to not commit crimes. There are various states who are actually handing criminal, known criminals cash to say, well, we'll just pay you off if you don't commit crimes. And then also, the state of California wouldn't make our prison system an absolute joke. California says they want to stop crime, all while the state is actually laxing criminal punishments and releasing more convicted criminals back onto the streets actually early. News is now coming out that one of the individuals that was released in relation to this incident was supposed to be serving a 10 year sentence, but was let go early. So based on the actual evidence we have right now, what actually would have stopped this incident is actually keeping that criminal in jail, but the state of California doesn't like that. They like to release criminals out onto our streets. But again, this isn't actually about stopping criminals. This is really about using a convenient narrative to go after our right to keep and bear arms. And they will keep doing this until firearms ownership is completely outlawed in the state of California. 
Now let's address some of these specific calls for gun control measures that various politicians, including Biden, have called for. You have heard Biden and others say that there needs to be a ban on so-called ghost guns. Well, first, there is no evidence that the firearms used in this incident was actually built from an 80 percenter. In fact, the evidence indicates that this was a stolen handgun that was a standard manufacturer handgun that was later modified. On top of the actual evidence, California already has various laws that target so-called ghost guns. California makes it very hard for someone to actually build an 80 percenter into a functioning firearm. This process in the state of California includes serialization, notification requirements that actually go to the California Department of Justice. On top of that, California recently passed a new law that will require the purchase of 80 percenters to go through gun stores where you will have to have a background check ran for that 80 percenter purchase. And while I'm mentioning background checks as well, California has some of the strongest and overbearing background check system out of any state. Like I mentioned, you will have to do a background check to purchase 80 percenters going forward. You have to do a background check to purchase all firearms. You have to wait 10 days to take possession of any firearm. You have to do a background check for ammunition purchases. You can also only buy one handgun or semi-automatic rifle in any 30 day period. There is the safe handgun roster on top of that that restricts the types of handguns you can actually purchase. Then on top of all that, there's a magazine ban, an assault weapons ban. And also on top of all that, you have to go through an FFL to have a background check run on you every time you do a private party transaction. So a lot of these loopholes that they say are allegedly out there, there are a ton of laws that actually restrict various processes in the state of California. Again, California has the most gun laws out of any state. I've also heard some discussion about well, California is being affected by criminals going into other states and purchasing illegal firearms in a different state. And that's why we need national laws that apply to all these states. First of all, this whole discussion about criminals going out of state to purchase stuff is a complete falsehood. There is not a lot of evidence about various individuals going out of state to purchase firearms and then coming into another state like the state of California and committing crimes. The reality is if a criminal wants to illegally obtain a firearm, they can do that in their own state. Second, there's no evidence that that actually occurred in this specific incident. So I don't know why that's even being brought up. Third, this specific incident actually shows why this whole argument about states and people going out of state and why we need federal laws. This whole incident actually kind of collapses that argument because the handgun that was actually used in this incident, the handgun that was found was not only stolen, but it was modified to be full auto. Well, under federal law, an existing federal law that's been around for a long time under the GCA and the NFA, that type of handgun is illegal in all states. So politicians are calling for a federal law that actually is in place. But if it's in place, shouldn't it have actually stopped this incident? Isn't that why they are trying to pass these bills? Of course not, because again, we know criminals don't actually care. Criminals don't follow these laws. So where does this leave us? Well, gun control advocates are simply using a tragedy to push their agenda once again. We don't know any of the facts surrounding this incident, yet that hasn't stopped them from calling for various types of gun laws. Also, on a side note, this incident is looking more and more like it has more to do with a criminal feud than a, just a random incident. But again, that doesn't matter to those gun control advocates. They're going to still push their agenda using any narrative they can. So I'd fully expect to see more gun laws be introduced in the state of California and those that are already kind of in the works, like various gun manufacturer tax bills, will likely get a greater push now. But regardless, we as the gun owner community in California will continue to fight against these laws and bills tooth and nail, and we'll try to continue to educate people about our rights to keep and bear arms. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could have ever thought. So thank you so much for all of your support. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget to stay with built barm scholars and stay with maintained barm scholars.